Hello, I'm Malcolm Harslow. And I'm Janice Baker. What has the show Beautiful got to do with bugs? Well, you'll find out in this episode of Our Time when our special guests are David Gauchy and Kristen Messenger. You are so beautiful to I know, me. I know. It's, no, it's not that song though, is You're it? You're only human after all. <laughs> As very special guest on this episode. You've never done that before. It's meant I just usually me doing rubbish with you. <laughs> <laughs> our very special guest on this episode of Our Time is David Gauchy. David, welcome once again. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Fourth both time in <laughs> 10 years, I it think. It is, it is, it is. I, that would almost make me a regular. It yeah. would. <laughs> yes. yes. Finally, regular at last. <laughs> Close with us. You're one in 100 because we're we've just passed our 400th episode. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That is fantastic. Yes. David, but you're here because you're about to produce, or you've been producing and about to start playing, the show Beautiful, which is... Um, yes, it's the, the story of Carol King um, from her very early days uh, as a teenage songwriter through to the massive hit that was Tapestry, the album Tapestry. Albert, yeah, yeah. I think everybody heard that. But the songs that. are really the history of our lives, particularly if you're over a certain age. Oh, absolutely. Look, it's really interesting. Her music has this tendency to have a bit of a, a, a you know, pendulum. You know, they come back and they become popular. Mm. Um, you, especially R&B, you know, R&B singers tend to like the song You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman is mm. one of those classic songs. Oh, really? I had no but, idea. Yes. <laughs> it's like the Carpenters, though, too, David. They're Carpenters songs, Absolutely, I think, have a, yes. a long line. Yeah, I would agree, I would agree. It's because they're so heavily melodically based. Mm. They've got mm. such great melodies. Our brains want to follow the melody, don't they? They you do. Sort of, it's almost you predict what the next note's going to be, so it's easy for your head to follow. Yes, absolutely. So what, um, what are a few of the songs that, that you'd know? Oh, gosh. So I, I think, um, you know, people will know the song, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. They'll know It's Too Late, Baby. Um, that's uh, another one. Because um, the, the musical doesn't just focus on uh, Carol King and Jerry Goffin, who was her writing partner. It also focuses on Cynthia Vile and Barry Manns. Well, so, let's have a look at some of the photos of some of the people yes. uh, who are represented in the show, obviously by actors, yes, playing yes. the role of. Absolutely. This, Carol of course, King. is. That is, of course, Carol King. Um, a very, so, so that would be really, um, you know, uh, late 60s, very early 70s, uh, Carol, because um, the, the show starts off at around about 1958, when Carol was uh, 15 or 16. And that is the Carol King that most people know from the Tapestry mm. album. But she couldn't afford shoes. <laughs> she, uh, yes. Uh, normally there's a cat in that picture, but that's one without the cat. Oh, yeah, goodness. There you go. uh, there's a story. And that, of course, is the Carol King that people know from uh, performances at the uh, Academy Awards and the uh, Emmys, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there, that's a very young Carol King with her then writing partner, Jerry Goffin, and I think... But not just writing partner. No, they became husband and wife. And actually, a really interesting story because Jerry uh, was a man with, with a lot of inner demons. And um, it's interesting how the song Tapestry, from the album Tapestry, really talks about the beautiful relationship and also tumultuous relationship between Carol and Jerry. So um, it's very, very interesting. Is that the bashing together, if you like, of artists' um, egos and abilities? Oh, there's a bit of that. But I think, you know, these days we'd probably look at someone like Jerry and say there's, you know, some issues with perhaps um, uh, bipolar disorder and things like that, uh -huh. know, probably these days. Look, uh, there he is again, uh, looking, you know, very, older. very, yes, older. Yeah. Um, handsome but, man. But very, very handsome. No, he was one of, those, one of those 60s sort of star look, very didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, very handsome. Um, and I mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, uh, Barry Mann and Cynthia Vile. They wrote the song On Broadway, which is in the show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's uh, songs like Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow? Oh, That's another song yeah. that everyone will know. Yes. The See, beauty of this musical is that it doesn't just celebrate these wonderful writers. It actually also celebrates the, the performers like um, Little Eva, because they wrote 
uh, the locomotion, locomotion yeah. um, the Shirelles who sang "Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow," and um, and the Did Drifters. Did she write to do "Run Run" as well? Uh, I, I'm not she sure. may I've have, but I don't know. Yeah. But I think that might have been. And of course, that's Donnie Kirshner. Now, Donnie Kirshner ran 1650 Broadway, which was this building where all of the writers would have a room a little bit bigger than the size of a piano and uh, that's where they would all, you know, gather and write and he would help publish their music and he put them together with the, the, the performers. Mm, Good amazing. Amazing. Yes. Wow. And there's a very young, very young Carol and uh, Jerry together there. It's amazing. So did their marriage last very long? Because they were very, as you said, they were very young when <laughs> they, they got were. together. They were. Not particularly. Unfortunately, uh, they, had, um, they had some children and then very um, young too. Yeah. Very, very young. That must be very hard because you've got to concentrate on your family. life together, the family, yes. and still earn a quid. So Absolutely. And there's a very old Jerry Goffham just before he died. He died. At, he was only 75 when he died, oh, which is right. these days we would say yeah. quite young. He yeah, looks yeah, yeah. He Became quite the recluse. Well. No. No. no, no. So it's beautiful. It's really, you know. I say, oh, look, look at that. That's uh, that's Carol and Jerry at, at a much. Uh, I love that. Don't you love the hair? Yes. yes. I love the hair. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> the black and white shots are fantastic. Yeah, they are because they do bring back a memory of. But she's, she's managed to span all these decades with her music. She has. Um, How much is represented in the show? Oh, look, uh, there's... So if it starts in the 50s... 1950, 1958 is where it begins. So um, the first song that she uh, presents is the song It Might, Might As Well Rain Until September. Oh. So that's the song oh, people yes. will remember. That was her first big Who hit. Who sang that? Was that Helen Shapiro? Bo uh, Bobby V did oh, it. Bobby V, of course, Bobby it was v. a boy's Helen song. Helen Shapiro, yes, yes. that's a Oh, that's oh, a name. name? Gosh. Well, yes. see, it's all my vintage. <laughs> <laughs> Frighteningly so. Oh, no. So this show that you're producing yes. is, uh, how long is the show? Is it? So the, 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 the season is only for 10 shows. Okay. Um, it starts on February 19 through to February 29. We're at Leap Year uh, this year. Um, and as um, part of the Adelaide Fringe, It is. Of it's part, yeah. of the, part of the Adelaide Fringe, which is really important for us as you know, producers to have a fringe. Yes, but but did you mean how long does the show run in its actual running? Is it a two-hour? It's a two-hour. It's a full musical. Say. Yeah, with an interval. Yeah, with all absolutely. those songs, it would have to. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But you know, it it goes, it flies. Um, I got to see it, and I couldn't believe that we'd got to interval, and I kept thinking, oh. Um, something's happened, and then the second half is over and done with. That's but well. it really leaves you wanting more. Is I'd it? like to say a friend of ours um, oh. lives in Sydney, and so she went to Melbourne to see it, and she said it was a beautiful production. Yes, it is. Well, again, so, it's the soundtrack of our lives. That's it. Really, really <laughs> is. So, how important is a fringe to a producer like you, David? Look, it's it's very, very important. Um, the the idea of a fringe, which is really a non curated festival, because. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to curate our own shows, but that whole idea of having um, a number of perform a number of uh, shows on at the same time, so you've got the power of uh, mass advertising through the Fringe Book, um, through their social media and their um, their infrastructure, the website, etc., mm -hmm. ticketing, etc. It is really, really important. I think, um, you know, I, I, I've done it every year now for the past, well, since 2013. Um, and it's it, it, people now look out for my shows. Yes. So that's where it is. And you've just really won, good. with the Adelaide Theatre Guide, you won two awards for the show that you did last year. I did, yes. That was brilliant. It was fantastic. And the awards yes. were for? Uh, best Musical and Best Ensemble in a Musical. Yeah. Well it, done. We were really thrilled. Yeah. Excellent. And, and the group that are doing this, they're all new people to you as well? Look, um, uh, there's a couple that are, I've worked with before, but yes, there's a lot of new... Um, uh, and I'm really thrilled that we've got so many people. And, there are and they're some all from Adelaide? Every one of them are okay. from Adelaide. And, and a few of them have never done a musical before. Oh, okay. But they came in and uh, that's one of the other beauties about uh, what I like to do is I give people an opportunity. And, well, it's uh, community theatre, really. That's exactly it? what it's about, yeah. yeah. Oh. And let people cut their teeth on a show. Well, Looking congratulations, because yes, it's yeah. a huge risk for any producer to take. 
Because at the is. end of the day, it still is about money, isn't it? Oh, well, at the end of the day, you know, even even a cheap musical puts you at risk at, you know, somewhere between forty-five and $50,000. And people don't realise that you, you don't just put on a show for the sake of it and don't have to pay somebody to use the book and the songs and the music. Mm. All uh, of absolutely, those things come yes, at quite yeah. a cost. Oh, absolutely. So yes. making up the cost of a ticket to come and see a show, it's all of those things apart from hiring a venue, all the rehearsal time, the mm. costumes. Yes, absolutely. You have to take... You really have to do your budgeting. Um, and you've got to be strict to budget because if you're not, you'll find yourself in trouble really, really quickly. But the advantage also of working with somebody like you is you've worked within the professional field in major shows all over the world. Yeah. And you came back home to Adelaide to really set up this sort of company. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, it, I try and run it as professionally as I, I possibly can. And, um, and, and the focus is most certainly on the performers. You know, I don't, I don't go crazy with the production side of things. The, for me, the focus is, is the story, the music, mm. And the performance. And the people. And um, uh, that's not to say you don't get a really good experience of theatre, but um, for me, you know, if you're going to sit there and say, well, uh, I only have a limited budget, where am I going to, where am I going to cut it? Well, it's not going to be uh, cutting corners on on the on the people mm. and what they need to be able to tell the story. Well, good best. luck. Yes, good luck. But I have we'll to say, to no, recently I saw you singing in the supermarket, one of those, it was like, what was they call it? Oh, the pop, gosh, where, that, 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 well, it was, it was like yeah, the yeah, staff yeah. suddenly burst into song, oh, but they weren't oh, the yes, staff. Yes, yes. I, a flash mob. It was fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. At a, at a local... <laughs> the shoppers were... <laughs> With going? your voice. Don't worry, I was like that too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Oh, David, well congratulations done. and good mm. luck with the show. Thank you very, very much. And we'll be back with some slugs. Oh. Give me a home among the gum trees. Yes, look. With lots of plum trees, but there's no plums on this gum tree. There's no, there's some actually. Six, as yes. everybody says. <laughs> and the lovely Kristen Messenger is joining us. Hello, Hi. Kristen. Now, Kristen, I was going to say, are. thank you for bringing me in, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> oh, really? I don't like creepy crawly things. It's only if the <laughs> girls, isn't it? Isn't it the girls eat the boys? <gasps> no, that's praying mantises. Oh, these so aren't these praying mantises. So these are stick insects. They they oh, belong right, to the order Phasmodea. So well, then. while they're doing their thing there on the gum tree, let's just talk about you. Sure. I've known you since you're a little girl. You have. That's and, true. Which is amazing. And I've seen you go through all these stages of having a possum in your <laughs> bra and all sorts of odd things. That's true. Oh, Seriously, really? baby possum. Oh, okay. Possums after. and birds were my first Keeping love. Keeping warm. Oh, yeah. sweet. Because they'd fallen out their nest yeah. or wherever. Yeah. yeah. So what, what makes somebody uh, feel disattached to every living thing? Oh, I, I don't know. I was just always like that. Once I gave my mum chickens for her birthday because I really wanted chickens <laughs> and I didn't think she would let me have chickens. Was so you, did I, she appreciate the, the, the thought? Uh, Fresh eggs? Not did so you much, sell it? But, no. <laughs> but we did get to keep the chickens. <laughs> you did? Yeah. I used to name things after her. <laughs> if I really if I wanted Barbara the chicken. I'd say it's called Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's and so then, cute. Yeah. So. But uh, was this something that came out of the things you learned at school was, or was this sort of imprinted on you as a yeah, child? Yeah, no, I think it goes back bef earlier than that. I sort of remember the first thing I ever sort of, you know, bought home was a pigeon, a feral pigeon, and I bought it home from my primary school and it had damaged its leg. I think the groundsman had been like taking pot shots at them because, you know, oh, yes. back in the day yes. they could. And um, yeah, and it had this horrific injury to its leg and I thought I could, you know, save Nurse it. it back to yeah. Dr. Christian. And yeah. I, unfortunately I couldn't. I just no. probably made it very miserable for longer than it would have been miserable if I'd just <laughs> left, left it. it. But, um, but I did become very good at birds and possums and um, 
you know, well, wildlife in general. I, I, mm. I went to Roseworthy and I studied natural resources management and, you know, which is what you did if you wanted to be a park ranger, I guess. And is that what you wanted? Yeah, well, that's what I did for a while. I ran the St Kilda Mangrove Trail and I, um, you know, which worked in a... Which is a fascinating place. Fascinating, yeah. Absolutely fascinating. So I worked... Um, so close to a major city too, that's what... We often forget here in South Australia. We've got yes. hills on one side, beautiful beaches yeah. on another, mangrove yeah. swamps just up the coast. You know, I, I would say forests. Oh, forests. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, I ran the when mangrove the trail for. Well, when you want people to have positive. Right. Connotations about it, rather than you know, people I think think of swamps as horrible, not mozzy, such a nice place to be, stinky in. places. But if you, <laughs> if you think forest, you can, but the you know, teeming with life, teeming, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and now, of course, that's that's all become part of the international bird sanctuary, but um, and part of the dolphin sanctuary as well. Right. Yeah. So right I, on our back door, as they're as not in, moving very much. As in fact, <laughs> these creatures well. are. T tell us about these creatures. Well, these are phasmids or stick insects, and phasmid um, is uh, really from the Latin. It means fam phantom or ghost or apparition, I guess. And there's a lot of them in Australia, more than a hundred, well over a hundred. But see, of them. they're so well disguised. In it. Can you put one on my hand? Yeah. Oh, well, you can see so this one here. This is a oh. spiny oh. leaf insect. God, and if you wriggle know. your fingers above her, yes. she'll. Will she come up on no, my hand? No, though? she might just want to sit on your hand. Okay, it's just so we can get a nice. Oh, so close she's up. only a nymph. She, if she was an adult, she would be six times that size. Oh, and quite heavy and a bit annoying to handle. I'm glad but you brought um, the baby in. <laughs> but extraordinarily, um, camouflage. Yeah, so so they're all camouflaged to different things. So so she camouflages. She's a rainforest species. Even though we sort of feed them gum leaves in in the wild, they would encounter relatively few gum leaves. Right. Um, they tend to be right up high in the rainforest Tender. canopy and they're attracted to s quite spiny leaves like diploglottis and native tamarind that is and things like that and so they they um, mimic dead leaves really. Yes, spiny. Yes. Well, she goes um, and there. this other one that I've got here. Yeah. Oh. Hang on, darling. There she goes. She's yeah, she'll right. be alright. So this one is a crowned stick insect. And you can see she's an adult because she's actually got wings. Oh, ah. make her show us those wings if we're. She wouldn't just take gentle. off. No, she can't fly. So a lot of the female stick insects don't fly, even if they do have wings. Um, Hello. They don't really need to. They're parthenogenetic, so they. Uh, not all species are, but the vast majority of them. Um, and that means they can produce a fertile egg without a male. Wow. So they don't need oh, to really? be. Yeah, they don't. They don't need to reproduce sexually. They can reproduce but asexually, as wow. it were. How amazing! That's well, she's quite happy there. Leave her there. Yeah. So no, they can clone themselves. She's coming my way. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so she's a bark mimic, and she would be quite happy there because your um, the colour jacket is is closer to bark coloured than the yes. leaves. So you saw yes. before I'm that safe. she was trying to wander around, and there's a few of them here, and they're quite. Oh. You know, they're quite low down, and they're. They're, they're more comfortable really on, on bark or on the part of the tree that might be have bark reflecting behind it. Right. Whereas, mm. So are you breeding these or are yeah, you just go around picking them off trees? Yeah, no, these are, <laughs> these are actually all tropical species. So I do breed them, but I do keep desert species as well. I've, I've just come back from Wyala, which is probably I don't want to say my favourite place, but probably up there with my top five favourite places. Right. Um, because the ecology out there is amazing. Um, if I do want to say, if you've never been to Wyala, get Go to there. Wyala. It's amazing. Yeah. There's, they've got everything: giant cuttlefish, dolphins, <laughs> desert. You know, they've got full driving. They've got mountain biking. They have got everything. Why do Big you keep trucks, looking at me mines, like everything. Just, I'm just, but what? the other thing they've got is really good bugs. So I make a trip out there at least four times a year. Gosh. Um, so how do you use these in your work? That's so probably... bugs and slugs. That's um, our business. We mm -hmm. visit schools and kindies and shopping 
shopping centres and um, we're part of the science collective so we do um, Science Alive and all of the big science shows at the showgrounds. Um, that's what I was doing in Wyala. We had a Science Alive in Wyala and then I stay mm -hmm. a few extra days and um, have a look, look at the bugs that are around. I found some really rare species out there that haven't been recorded and stuff. Really? So, yeah. Will so they it's be easy to Kristen? find a bug that hasn't and been And you can recorded. name it after your mother. No, you don't. <laughs> I won't. Um, I like that. So I'm not a taxonomist. That's a really different thing. I'm, I'm an ecologist. I study life histories. I would never sit and look down a microscope for 12 months and describe hmm. a species. Um, and the person who describes the species is the person who gets to name it. Oh, so, right. Yeah, that's not really my cup of tea. I, I'm fascinated by how things interact with their environment and mm. I'm fascinated by how things fit in the natural world. And I think because as you know I had a background in drama um, and yes, as um, an actress. Um, children's theatre mm. and so when I started my career there wasn't really, you know, there weren't environmental interpreters, there were just um, Scientists, there weren't yeah. people who then well, I think people described sort of, what was happening and yeah, relate it to people that would then understand too. Without yeah, being too, too and, and I guess that's my thing is I, you know, I'm, I'm really not just about bugs. You can take me into oh, any Malcolm. habitat and I can sort of explain what's happening there and <laughs> tell you who's who and what's what. <laughs> she's taking a shine to you, Malcolm. No. <laughs> she's only, she's I was going to say, only human, but on she's top actually, of your head. isn't that wonderful? <laughs> That's well, hysterical. It's, oh, that's fantastic. It's not going to jump over this way. No, they don't, they don't jump. They're, oh, it they're won't eat like you. It's going to take it flight. It won't eat you, Janice. No, no, I'm not And they say. don't bite. They're all vegans, the, the stick insects. There they're, you are. All I have, I've found one species that will have a bit of a nibble on the others if it's crowded. But for the most part, they just eat leaves. And yeah. Then, <laughs> but now, tell us about the children's... It's called Little Buggers? Oh, Little Buggers yeah. is um, bugs and Slugs Bug Club mm -hmm. and um, we have a home base so Little Buggers is available to libraries and you know for short um, what do you call it seasons if mm. you like but um, so we have done a few seasons like at Mount Barker and a, f a few libraries around the place but our home base is Bower Road Community Centre. Right here in is, South Australia. Yep down in Port Adelaide mm -hmm. and um, Little Buggers is sponsored by the City of Charles Sturt mm -hmm. um, with a bit of interest from Port Adelaide Council as well. We had our right. mayor there on the weekend. Well, it's important. And it's actually important for councils to be involved in these things yep. because, uh, as, as you've said to me, without these things, our life would be quite different. Yeah, and I feel like we've really... I feel like Bugs and Slugs has been around for probably 10, more than 10 years now. And um, I feel like we've made a real impact on people's um, understanding of the insect world and the invertebrate world, which mm. is really what they are, things without bones. But but without these without these slugs and grubs and things <laughs> that are around, I mean, uh, humans would be in trouble. Absolutely. Because of what oh, they do. Because they do And we'll all talk more work. about that in just a tick. Yeah. We'll just take a break and I might get a haircut. We're talking to Barbara the Stick Insect. No, Barbara the Stick. <laughs> Aren't we talking to Barbara the Stick Insect? Yeah. We are. We, we, We've just called her Barbara. They're all Barbara. They're all Barbara. <laughs> no, I, I rather fancy... Can I just explain that because it's Kristen's mother's name. Yes. So she names Kristen everything after her mum. calls everything after her mum. <laughs> Kristen, um, we're just saying before, uh, without insects and the grubs and all the other slugs and things that are around, humans wouldn't have the lifestyle that we have and we don't realise that. We try and kill them all mostly. Yeah, we do and um, and that just blows me away because they do all the dirty work. We, they can live without us but we can't live without them. Mm. They, they condition the soil, they keep the water clean, they're the filter mm -hmm. in the ocean, they, um, they're well, the fast food, you know, they're the things everything eats. They true. make hollows in trees so that and other things And they fertilise all the fruit and vegetables. They fertilise the soil, mm. I, part of soil conditioning I guess, but they, they do all this amazing stuff and um, we just 
you know, we're just filling our environment with um, toxicity and pesticides that um, ultimately are reducing their numbers by something like 30% every decade. So. I think um, you know we can't have enough education because mm. those tables I think are slowly starting to turn. Mm. You know we're all. I'm always reminded of that bit in Finding Nemo where Dory makes all the fish swim. You know she says just start swimming. Yes. And I I see this at the moment people getting so caught up in who's right and who's wrong and you know and um, this person said that and how dare you know how dare that young kid all of that stuff. Listen, but we have to go. <laughs> yes. Oh, do we? But because we're in the middle of a conversation, why don't we do all this again at another time with some other bugs? Well, I want to say you start haven't got time. swimming. Start, start swimming. swimming. Oh, thank you. Start swimming. <laughs> or wearing an in, wearing something. It's better than a thing you wear to the races. Oh. Uh, listen, we have to go. Sadly, thank you, Kristen. Kristen, thank you. And special thank thanks you. to David Gauchy with his show during yes. the Fringe. Beautiful. And I'm giving this to you as a gift. No. Keep yourself nice till next time. <laughs> Time we see you, everyone. <laughs>